Folks, let's go over the most important stimulus news that you want to be sure to know. Here it is, everybody. Appropriately so, heroes. These are heroes and heroines feeding us, working insane hours. And now because they want better wages, they want to end this disastrous two-tier wage system by which younger workers earn substantially lower wages and benefits than older workers. These workers are standing up for the younger generation. Yeah. Real solidarity, doing exactly the right thing. The company responds in an incredibly abrasive and, and outrageous way. So I am proud. I mean, these people are really heroes and heroines. They are incredibly courageous. And what they are fighting against, that type of corporate greed, is what we are seeing all over this country. During the pandemic, when thousands of workers died because they had to go to work, yeah. In order to feed their families, the billionaire class made huge amounts of money. So I am proud to stand with these workers in their union uh, tomorrow. You're, you're standing in, inside the Capitol where I hear your, your voice reverberating off the marble. And so I have to ask you uh, as well about uh, what, what looks like uh, uh, what will be the end of the year without the Build Back Better agenda passing out of the Senate. Um, there's multiple interpretations of the ongoing conversations with Joe Biden and Joe Manchin. Chuck Schumer told reporters that the increase is enough to last until 2023, which will allow Congress to avoid any more fights over the debt ceiling. The House just passed the legislation early Wednesday, in a vote of 221 to 209. Lawmakers managed to get the measure passed just in time to avoid an economic scare. And Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen told lawmakers that she estimated the United States would reach its debt limit ceiling by December 15th. According to the Treasury Department officials and experts, if lawmakers didn't address the debt limit by then, the U.S. would have defaulted on its debts for the first time, which could lead to a global recession. Everybody, let's not forget about this important stimulus news. And soon, as a result, they, they're not going to be able to get this to the, to the parliamentarian and get through the voterama and get through all the hoops that they need to jump through by Christmas. Thus, the focus has shifted to voting rights. Now, I would be skeptical that they can get that done in time uh, it, you know, by the end of this year either because the problem remains the same as it ever was. There is a path to getting 48 Democrats around the filibuster and to a final vote. They have 50 votes on a mace To be accountable. And I'm glad to say today we're about to announce that we are taking that charge seriously and have heard you. But please continue with your leadership because it's so important. So thank you. And good morning, everyone. It is great to be in the House of Labor. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. And it's so good to be here at the AFL-CIO. Um, you know, the last time I was in this building was in August. And it was early in the morning. My husband, Doug, and I came here to pay our respects and say goodbye to the late, great Rich Trumka. And um, as we all know, he was a man who lived and breathed solidarity. And I remember that morning, because we wanted to just come in and be low key. And, um, and so we walked in the door, and there was Liz Schuler. And she greeted me with a big old warm hug. And we talked that day about Rich's legacy, about the tremendous mark he made and left on our nation. And Liz, we also talked about the future, because that's what I believe Rich would have wanted. Um, and we talked. OK, everybody ready? Well, I'm here with Congressman Jason Smith, who's the ranking member of the House Budget Committee. And we're going to put a fine point on this week. Uh, <clears throat> the good news for the American consumer, there's not going to be any more inflation in your stockings because of Build Back Better. I want to thank Senator Manchin and others for standing their ground. And my belief is that Build Back Better never gets better. It will never get better. You can't, you can't make this thing you can't put lipstick on a pig, and when it comes to inflation uh, and deficit spending, this thing is a monster pig. So let's start with this idea. Our Democratic colleagues say that the CBO score is fake. Uh, 
And she's growing on me, by the way. I think she does a good job. <laughs> this is a fake CBO score that is not based on the actual bill that anybody is voting on. Press Secretary Jen Psaki. Okay. Next. Senator Durbin, one of my closest friends. He's a good guy. Senator Graham is making up numbers. It's Lindsay at his best. You know, he's waxing loyal followers of Donald Trump, who apparently must be the CBO, and Republicans have some preposterous number to quote on the air if we know what the cost is going to be, and it's nowhere near that. To my good friend, <laughs> Senator Durbin, I promise you I'm not Svengali. Neither one of us have hold over CBO. We didn't make up the numbers. They analyzed the bill. We'll talk about that later, but I find that the White House spokesperson and Senator Durbin are attacking the CBO because if they can't successfully pull that off, they're in trouble. Here's the problem with their attack on CBO. I feel like I'm on Wheel of Fortune here. <laughs> <laughs> there was another time where there was a different view of the CBO. The estimates from the CBO which is really, a, as you know, the gold standard. No Republican or Democrat questions it. President Biden back in 2010. So I want the American people to know that this score from the CBO about the actual cost of the bill is not fake, it's real. The effect on the deficit is not fake, it's real. And so let's go talk about what they've said about this bill in terms of cost. President Biden said, my Build Back Better agenda costs zero dollars. My plans are fiscally responsible. They are fully paid for. They don't add a single penny to the deficit. In October, Congress nearly avoided default as Republicans and Democrats were in a gridlock over how to address the issue. Republicans didn't want to raise the vote to the debt limit and argued it was a duty of the Democratic majority. Republicans have wanted Democrats to specify an exact dollar number that they raised the limit by. And thousands of taxpayers may still be waiting for a tax refund on unemployment benefits that were collected during a crisis. The American Rescue Plan Act, a crisis relief law, waived federal tax on up to $10,200 of unemployment benefits. However, many people eligible for the tax break had filed their annual taxes before President Biden signed legislation on March 11th. To date, the IRS has identified more than 16 million people who may qualify for the check, and the IRS has sent out over 11.7 million refunds. According to the most recent data, payments started, payment started in May has indicated that the IRS may continue payments in the summer and the fall. That's all the stimulus news that you have to know. Thank you again for your support. So let's go over more stimulus information. 